Hi everyone, in this video we're going to explore a basic setup of a GitLab CI-CD pipeline using a GitLab runner. So before we get started, Packet Publishing asked me to review this book and I have a copy to give away. It's the first edition of DevOps Unleashed with Git and GitHub written by Yuki Hattori. It's excellent and goes to the basics of advanced Git usage, collaboration, CI, CD and AI. To be in with a chance to win, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video. Any comment will count as an entry. I'll be randomly selecting one comment one week after publishing this video and will announce the winner right here on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. Let's get started. I've already set up a new GitLab repository for this project. Within that repo, I've scaffolded some very basic code that we'll be using as a test case throughout this video. Specifically, I've created a simple Ansible playbook, which we'll use as a basic debug test. With this setup in place, I can focus on some simple CI-CD aspects without getting too bogged down in application details. Now that we have our basic code base in a GitLab repository, the next step is to set up a GitLab project runner. A GitLab runner is a lightweight agent that will execute the jobs defined in our CI-CD pipeline. First, I'll navigate to the settings CI-CD section in my GitLab project and click on New Project Runner. I'll set a tag, leave everything default and click on Create Runner. Again, here, I'll leave everything as default and I'm presented with instructions of how to register the runner. Make sure you've installed the runner software for your operating system before doing anything. Link in the description for details. I'll spin up a terminal and paste the details in to register the runner. Notice I get a warning on the screen here. To silence the warning, you can just add the empty runners monitoring element in the config.toml file. For the purpose of this test, I'll just go through the prompt and select defaults where necessary to keep it simple. I'll start the runner with GitLab runner run and to verify that the runner is set up correctly, I'll head back to the runner section in my project settings. If everything went smoothly, I should see my newly registered runner listed there, ready to pick up and execute jobs from my CI CD pipeline. Now that we have our GitLab runner set up and ready to go, it's time to take a look at the GitLab CI file. This YAML file is the heart of your CI CD pipeline and it defines the various jobs and stages that will be executed by the runner. The GitLab CI YAML file lives in the root directory of your Git repository and GitLab will automatically detect and process it whenever changes are pushed to your project. This file allows you to define a wide range of tasks such as building your application, running tests, deploying to different environments and more. The GitLab CI file is written in the YAML syntax which makes it very easy to read and write. It consists of several key components that define the structure and behavior of your CI CD pipeline. But let's take a look at the basics while we configure the file. Firstly, it has to be called .gitlab-ci.yaml and I'll start the file as all YAML files starts with three dashes. I'll specify an image that I wanna use, which is Python 3.9 and I'll create a stage. The stages section defines the different stages in your pipeline. Stages represent logical groups of jobs and jobs within the same stage run in parallel while stages run sequentially. Common stages include build, test, deploy, but you can define custom stages as needed. I'll create a build stage. Jobs are the fundamental units of work in a pipeline. Each job is defined by a unique name and belongs to a specific stage. Jobs can have scripts that define the commands to be executed, as well as rules for when they should run. Jobs can also have dependencies on other jobs or artifacts from previous stages. I'll create a job called build job and assign it to the build stage. The script section within a job defines the commands to be executed during that job. Scripts can be written in any language or shell script, as long as the runner has the necessary interpreter or runtime. Scripts can also leverage GitLab's built-in variables or define custom variables for the job or project. Here I'll create a script to print the user's login name to the screen during runtime. 
I'll leave a link in the description to all the predefined CI/CD variables. Now if we go back to the project route, we should see the pipeline running. I'll speed this section up for brevity. And clicking back on the pipeline shows everything so far as green. Next we'll add a before script. The before script is an optional section in the CI file that allows you to define commands or scripts that should be executed before each job in your pipeline. These commands will run regardless of the stage or job they belong to, making before script extremely useful for setting up a consistent environment or performing common tasks across multiple jobs. I'll make sure I pick this up to date and install Ansible and Ansible Lint. I'll add an additional stage called Lint and add a new job called Ansible Lint, which will be part of the Lint stage. This will run the command Ansible Lint. It's running strict linting, so we'll test this by not adding a blank line at the end of our CI file. Again, the pipeline starts. The build job runs and is again successful. but the lint job fails with missing line at end of file. I'll fix the missing line at the end of the file and add another stage called syntax. Again, I'll create a job for this. And yes, I've spelled it incorrectly. I'll come back to that later. I'll add the stage to the job and create a script to check for any Ansible syntax issues. So now we can watch the build, lint and syntax stages run. I'll speed up this process because it could take quite some time. Firstly, that's the build job completed successfully. That's the lint job completed successfully. And finally, the syntax job has completed successfully. Lastly, I'll create a final stage called Deploy. Build another job called Ansible Deploy. Here, I'll run the demo playbook within our repo and use a built-in variable to let us know which GitLab branch we are currently on. As soon as I commit the changes, the pipeline runs again. I'll speed this section up because it could take quite some time. That's the build job completed successfully. That's the lint job completed successfully. That's the syntax job completed successfully. And finally, that's the deploy job completed successfully. As promised, because it's gonna seriously mess with my OCD, I'm gonna go back into the syntax job and correct the spelling. As soon as I've corrected that spelling, it will initialize another pipeline. What I've shown here is a very basic flow to get you started, but by combining these components, you can create complex and powerful CI-CD pipelines that automate your entire development workflow. You can build, test, and deploy your applications to multiple environments, all while enforcing code quality, security and compliance checks along the way. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing or drop me a like. It helps my channel to grow and gives me the opportunity to continue making more content. Thanks for watching.